Balthazar? Yes, master? There's a beak in my stew. <laughs> oh, ha, how embarrassing. I must apologize. And there's a tail in one of those eyes. I'm so sorry, master. It didn't set up like it should. I can explain everything. You know what? It's good. <laughs> Go ahead and eat. You don't have to be antsy. Now tell me, young Casper, what's caught your fancy? Well, how did you know, sir? Well, how do you think? I'm not master for nothing, young neophyte. Wink! <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, regale me about your bright beacon. <laughs> I've noticed it too. It neither wanes nor it weakens. What do you suppose is the message it brings? Let us hear your best theory. It points to a king. A king? Yes, a king from the western lands. Well, why should we care? Some small throne changes hands. No, master, it's bigger than world succession. This king will be great and end all oppression. A great king in the west. Well, isn't that quaint? And all oppression, you say? <laughs> A saint. He'll have to be like a lion and strong to contend with the Romans, or he won't last long. But, Master, a lion, that's just the whole thing. His star shines in Leo. He's a right lion king. And what then, young Casper, and your thesis emergent? I'll let you claim next he'll be born of a virgin. I, I, I was. Yes, that's what I've been thinking. In the east, Virgo rises as Leo is sinking. Wait, have you been watching? Has this all dawned on you? Of course I have, Casper. I'm an astrologer, too. Do you think that these signs would by me go unnoticed? Your reading's not wrong, Casper. Not in the remotest. In fact, you're deserving of some commendation for stringing together such keen observation. Well, I've got to be honest. It wasn't that hard. Any student worth the salt could read these stars. What I mean, Master, it seems there's strange magic in here, speaking through us through the stars we read. I'm already a few steps ahead of you, child. I've consulted the records that were long ago filed by sorcerers like us, who now ages far gone, who heard from a Jew in old Babylon that there would be coming some world-crushing rock that would one day defeat monstrous evil livestock, and then would be crowned by the Ancient of Days, ruler of all things. Well, that's what Daniel says. How wonderful, Master. What a strange prophecy. The thing was revealed to someone like me. I guess the next question is, what should we do? Aren't you forgetting something, Casper? What's that? It's just for the Jews. Now I recommend we get back to the student. Master! <laughs> what, Balthazar? Uh, well, how do I put it? If the prophecy's true and the great king comes, could it mean that while Israel's kingdom ascends, might the rest of us meet some mad ends? Or maybe this king, if indeed he is great, would spare his new subjects some unhappy fate? I wonder if then it would be the right thing to pledge guilty early to the impending king. Ah, uh, yes, Melchior. Your position is noted. To any new power, you would at once be devoted. Maybe before we connect any more dots, I wonder if Balthazar would share his thoughts. Oh, uh, Master, I haven't prepared any speech. It's my role to learn and your role to teach. As the oldest and wisest of your servants, I'm afraid that we've been wasting your time. Nonsense, apprentice. You must speak your piece. Without free expression, our freedom would cease. Surely you know we are libertines here. Now, tell us your mind, and please, be sincere. Well, if share my opinion I must, I suppose it comes down to who we can trust. I don't think much of this Daniel of yore, but we've never doubted the heavens before. Beyond that, I don't think I know any more. And yet, Balthazar, 
what you know is just right. The power that orders the stars in the night is the power this order of sorcerers observes. And from its guidance, this order ne'er swerves. Perhaps Jewish stargazers, or orthodox or occult, could shed light on these matters were you to consult. Jerusalem scholars or Jerusalem seers, compare notes with them there and report back to me here. Balthazar, Melchior, Casper, Tate, you shall gather your things and at once shall proceed. West, you will travel with the stars as your guide and gain the answers you seek. Now I bid you good night. Oh, and, uh, thanks for the soup. I enjoy every bite. <laughs> Messiah, of course. Who do you think? 
Obviously now it feels silly to say, yet right when they asked, it's the first thing that came to my mind. But then as I looked at those three, but weird wild warlocks, weren't they, Moshi? Added by omens, and that's when I knew the Messiah wouldn't be coming for them. Just us Jews. <laughs> so anyway, forget the stars. Where's my stool?
Yet it seems odd, almost like they're reluctant, to accept the idea that the signs so abundant might point now to their king who waited so long. Could it be they're right and it's us that are wrong? Well, either way, I'm not sure I'm excited, as I was at first. It's clear we're not invited to partake of whatever this kingdom will be. If it's just for them, then it's not for me. But should we continue and follow the clue that was given to us by the priest of the Jews? Bethlehem town, we now know, is the place where our signs intersect. Should we check just in case? Master would be disappointed if we gave up this close and <laughs> failed to see. Our quest through, even if empty it ends. Could you spare a moment, friends? I couldn't help but overhear. Perhaps because I stood so near. But you're the men from Clear Out East who uh, made a splash, to say the least. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I am Herod, King of Israel! And of your thoughts, so now hear mine. This king around these parts, I'm kind of vexed. <laughs> uh, not vexed, but just a little stressed. Uh, not really stressed, but just kind of antsy. I can't afford to take some chance and be a loop of nearby rose, a challenge to my powers. So, look, I know this might be a real long shot, but it would ease my mind a lot. <laughs> you go down the deck now. On my behalf, then if and when you find a king or something close, return to me so I can go and uh, pay my respects or something like. <laughs> Could you do this for me, guys? Please. And thanks. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> surreptitiously commissioned to continue our research and investigate. But now on the orders of Herod the Great? Was that really the king? He yeah, acted so weird. Did you see his rings and his beautiful beard? <laughs> Not many folks can afford such bling around here except for priests and kings. But for someone named Great, sir, and sure acted nervous, as if he was scared when he asked for our service. And strange again that the king of the Jews would seem so put out by his Messiah, too. Well, I'm taking it as a confirmation of the importance of our vocation. Yeah, that Herod would deign to employ subterfuge means he trusts us more than those priest dudes. <laughs> <laughs> and anyways, it's almost dark. We should wait and check the stars. The brighter ones will start coming out. Hang on a sec. Which way is south? Because the star that we've been trailing is oh so bright and now prevailing in a new place now, my friends. And get this south over Bethlehem. Hey, you're right. Goodbye, what a thing. And like a beacon, it's shining. I feel so glad that I might cry. Praise be to him who made the sky. Should we tell the priests, the king? Tell them what? Are you kidding? The priests exuded such derision. They wanted no part in our mission. Nor Herod, if he's satisfied, to send out proxies and save his pride. And I say, we should go alone. And later we can make it known. Hear what we find in Bethlehem. You know, I feel sorry for them. Missing such historic moments, prophetic signs, and magical omens. But by these signs, and given thus, it's clear this power has chosen us. Let us now our camels employ, and complete our search for this baby boy, and find our king. How great our joy! Thank you, kind strangers, with all of our hearts, for the wonderful gifts, and for traveling so far. We're so honored you came, as we've several times mentioned. We're still getting used to this kind of attention. We are grateful to you, dear Joseph and Mary. And though it's been grand, we really can't tarry. 
of all that we've seen, we're just bursting to tell. First the king, then the priests of Israel. And then back to our master, we'll ride day and night. No longer we need these stars as our guides. Master will be so intrigued with it all. Though I wonder if master we still will him call. For we have found a new master and lord. And things will be different for us moving forward. We'll be patiently waiting as your child grows. And for his ascension, we will watch very close. It's so hard to think of my son as a king, so small and helpless as he's sleeping, but it's even harder to perceive him as God, living and breathing beside me. I'm honored to have been chosen to make his home. In your astonishment, you're not alone. That your God would choose to broadcast far and wide through the language we know to bring us alongside. To join in the promise of your Savior and King, it's truly the most magnificent thing. Your God is a mystery that we find enthralling. In fact, I perceive one day all will be calling. The good God of Israel, the God of all men. Clearly, he's working to draw us all in, in spite of what we are or what we've done. If he's God for us wizards, he's God for us. Your sweet, precious son. That was a beautiful thing to say, and I won't soon forget it. May God bless your way. God bless you too. I tried for some rest. Tomorrow you will surely be expecting more guests. It's actually been fairly quiet these days. The only big crowd is about shepherd's care. Some angels announce his arrival, but nobody but you has come for a while. Not that I'm not play. Well, it feels kind of strange. Like nobody knows, but I'm sure that will change. Once we report back to Herod and them, there will be a mad rush here to old Bethlehem. You'll see. Farewell, Joseph. Okay, come again. Well, they sure were nice. So cordial and warm. Bethlehem, too. Oh. You should get out there. And now to the north to see Israel's king, and to tell them of all that we have. Greetings! Oh! Oh, gosh. <laughs> hey, don't be afraid! Oh! Oh, I'm the angel of God. Oh, I'm here with a message for you from the Most High God. Don't be afraid, guys. Okay, I'm just gonna read this. She was beautiful, but we were terrified. She told us that Herod had designs on the boy, that if he found him, he'd have him destroyed. What a miserable, wretched, horrible man. Yet yeah, she indicated it was part of the plan that God had begun many years before. Oh, how I wish to talk to her more. But she sent us back here. Now, here we are. That's the whole story. Thank you, Casper. So, the star came to rest upon Bethlehem only after Herod asked you to look for him, confirming the place the priests had provided. Oh, how you must have been so delighted. What a journey. A what a lark you've been on. Meeting with priests, kings, angels, heir drawn, toward this young family and Yon shepherd's town, the city of David, the shepherd's big ground. All the deep meaning, the mystical thrill of seeing the pieces come together until the very last moment you stand back at all. <coughs> I just wish I could have been there with y'all. <laughs> Such wondrous signs haven't converged in ten generations of this oldest wizards, and I stay behind, all alone with my doubt. Master, I mean it, sir. You haven't missed out. The signs aren't the goal, and to glorify photos, it's the same or stew's realm, without eating the stew. The signs aren't the substance of our newfound joy, it's what they point to, this heavenly boy. And now that we've found him, I don't think those fears could ever recapture 
the wonder and fears that I have for them. Not because of them. In fact, they shine brighter, somehow, because of him. So now, I must lay down my craft and my hood, say goodbye to this room, and leave it for good. I'm going west to watch after this child, the boy upon whom our beloved stars smile. Casper, you're leaving? Why, you've just arrived. No longer a fresh, starry-eyed neophyte. To this order, you've more than proven your worth by finding the signs and inferring this birth. You're just on the cusp of gaining repute for being so young and yet so astute. You'd walk away from all of that now? Yes, sir, I would, and I'm doing so. Wow. And I'm going with him. What's this balance off? I'm going west to the boy with Casper. But you'd lose all these years. That's what you intend? Count me in two. He's my best friend. <laughs> Owen, for the fact that we'll be worshiping the king. But I just unpacked. I better start packing. Come on, little buddy. Let's round up the gear. Owen, thanks for the soup, sir. Best it's been all you. Balthazar, my oldest and most faithful companion, would you, for this child, your order abandon? How quickly it seems you have changed your devotion, my friend, over me, and you this boy chosen? All of my life I have called you master. All I have learned you have taught me. Hereafter, all that I do stems from your leading, and all I do now comes from the reading of the stars and the heavens. And who would I be if I ignored them now and missed possibly the most magnificent kingdom and almighty king revealed to our order so intimately? And he was there. He is there. Just like the stars said. Just like the priests in their holy books read. What kind of student of yours would I be without eager rejoicing and questing? So come with us, Master. I entreat you to come. Come see this grand thing that our new Lord has done. Won't you join with the prophets and the angels and stars and worship the King of creation? Balthazar, what you have said just now is just right. The power that orders the stars in the night is the power this order of sorcerers observes, and from its guidance, this order ne'er swerves. And now this king, this Jesus, I too will serve. Wow.